determine the end behavior of the given function. f of x is equal to 2 minus x raised to the seventh. All right, so now what we need to do, so we, we can approach this problem in a few ways, all right? Uh, one is we can always just use the calculator, okay? If you're allowed to use the calculator, that is. Um, but if you're not, what we can do is uh, we can try and get this into, now this is gonna take a long time and I'm not, I'm just, we're, we're gonna try to think this through, okay? Uh, we're not gonna do seven multiplications, but what I wanna do is I wanna try to get this function down to some case where we have individual terms, a plus B plus C plus D, et cetera, all right? So I know this says now two uh, sub minus X raised to the seventh, but pretend it doesn't say raised to the seventh, pretend it just says, you know, raised to the, raised to the first. Obviously you wouldn't have to do anything. And then your term, your your largest term here would be the X and we have to determine how X changes and um, that would then determine how Y will change. But let's say X is two, uh, excuse me, the exponent is two. What would we do? Well, we would wanna FOIL this now, right? You got two minus X and then you got two minus X, right? So two times two is gonna be four, two times negative X is gonna be negative two X, negative X times two is gonna be negative two X. And then the negative times the negative is going to be a positive now, right? X squared, okay? When I combine these terms now, this is gonna be four minus then four X plus X squared, cool? But now what we would have to do is we would have to now take this, okay? Now remember, this was just squaring it and this says to the seventh. So notice here that the, uh, the, the degree of your polynomial is now squared, okay? Now, and it's positive by the way. Now, what happens if you had to take this and then multiply it by another two minus X? Now let's not do the whole thing, but let's see what's going to happen to the highest, the, the, or in other words, the, I'm fumbling over my words here. The degree of this polynomial now should be a third degree. Why? Because when I basically take this X squared and I multiply it eventually by the negative X, it'll work out to be negative X cubed, okay? And then after that, when I do the next multiplication, it'll turn out to be positive x to the fourth, the leading, the, the degree. Then it's gonna be negative x to the fifth, positive x to the sixth, and then negative x to the seventh, okay? So this now is the degree and the leading term for this particular function, okay? Now that's what I need to use in order to analyze the problem, all right? Because this is the term that will begin to dominate the expression. And you have to you have to kind of get this into, you have to see this term. You have to be able to figure this term out, what the sign of that leading coefficient is, um, and the the sign. Oh, excuse me, the whether the power is going to be even or odd. Yeah, I'm done after this video today. Okay. So um, I made a little table to help us out. Take a look. Bam. So the first thing is we have to determine here whether we have an even power, an even degree, or an odd degree polynomial. So here it's definitely odd, so we're down to these two. Then we have to look at the sign of the leading coefficient, all right? And the sign here is gonna be a negative sign. So therefore this graph down here on the bottom right-hand side will generally represent the shape of this function pretty accurately. In other words, when the x value goes out to negative infinity, the y value is going on up to positive infinity. When the x value is now becoming or approaching positive infinity, the y value then is approaching now negative infinity. And that's what they're asking. That's what they mean by end behavior. They wanna know as x approaches negative infinity, the function's value here, f of x, will be approaching positive infinity, as we just suggested. And then as x approaches now positive infinity, the function's value here, f of x, let me write that a little neater, f of x, will be approaching then negative infinity. And that's kind of the answer. Now, if you'd like to see it in a, you know, from a calculator perspective, just literally take this and plug it on into the y equals. So go to your calculator, go y equals, okay? Open parentheses, two minus x. Close the parentheses, raise it to the seventh. Hit graph. Huh, look at that, right? Now, what I suggest, what I'm suggesting here is that this won't match the function perfectly, but I, what I will guarantee you is that the end behavior here to the left will match the end behavior over here to the left of this graph. And as you can see, it's going on up to positive infinity. And then what I also guarantee is that the behavior down here on the right will match the behavior over here, okay? Um, and we see that in the graph. 
okay? And that's basically it. I mean, you can also hit second graph. That'll bring up your table, right? You can start at zero and see as X goes, as X becomes more and more negative, what's happening to the Y value? It's becoming bigger and bigger, right? It's really becoming a lot bigger. That's scientific notation. And that's what we said over here. That's what's going to happen. And then as X becomes bigger in the positive direction, what's happening to the Y value? Oh my goodness, it's becoming more and more negative. That's exactly what we said over here. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really hope that helps. If it does, like and subscribe. Be well.